The purpose of this video is to introduce you to the glaucoma screening frequency doubling technology perimeter. Glaucoma is associated with damage to the optic nerve, which over time can cause gradual loss of peripheral vision. It's usually asymptomatic and most patients may not even notice visual loss until the disease has progressed to an advanced stage. At this point, the damage is irreversible. For this reason, visual field testing or perimetry is an important part of screening for glaucoma. One popular technique is frequency doubling technology perimetry, which we will demonstrate in this video. Frequency doubling technology offers both high sensitivity and specificity for detecting early glaucomatous damage. The advantages of this test for screening are numerous. It is portable, fast, easy to interpret, not greatly affected by refractive error and cataract, and has high test-retest reliability. To perform the test, patients are asked to fixate on a central point while stimuli are presented in 17 to 19 locations in their peripheral visual field. The patient presses a button if and when they see a stimulus, and if the button is pressed within 100 milliseconds to one second after the presentation, the stimulus is recorded as seen. If not, the stimulus is recorded as a non-seen response. Unseen targets are retested a second or even third time at increasing levels of contrast. If still unseen, the target is marked as not seen at maximum. The frequency doubling technology machine will come out of its carrying case like so. The first step will be to plug in the responder cable. Tilt the perimeter over to expose the underside of the machine and plug the responder cable with the stimulus button into the designated slot. This is the correct way to insert the plug onto the bottom of the machine. Then you will want to flip the machine over so that the patient can use it. Plug the power cable into the machine and wall. After turning on the power button, a double beep will sound. The home menu will be displayed on the screen. Before entering data on the screen, adjust the viewpiece to the correct position. If you are testing the right eye, you will want to slide the viewpiece so that if you are looking at the home screen, the viewpiece is to your right. If you are testing the left eye, the viewpiece should be on your left. This is the main menu. First, select Run Patient Tests using the blue button to the left of this text. You will then be prompted to input the patient's age. Afterwards, you will be able to select the screening test and the type of screening test called Screening C20-5. The machine will then go through the calibration process and a test will start automatically. Here you can see them running the patient test, changing the age of the patient, Subsequently, the screening test menu is chosen to run screening C20-5, and the machine is calibrating and getting ready. Next, the test will begin. Instruct your patient to look through the eyepiece with their glasses on if they require during the test. Ask the patient to fixate only on the black square in the center of the screen. We're going to show a demonstration of what the patient may see. They should click the responder button whenever they see flickering black and white lines. Remind them that it's very important to fixate on the black square and not look elsewhere. The test should take less than a minute per eye. Repeat for the left eye, making sure to slide the view piece over so that it's now on your left. While the patient is completing the test, your screen will display a map of where the stimuli are. It will also tell you when the test is complete. Once the test is finished, the machine will print the results automatically. To interpret them, know that white squares essentially mean that no vision has been lost in this sector of the visual field or that this patient performed as well as 99% of an age-matched population. Shading can be interpreted as mild visual loss, moderate visual loss, or severe visual loss, as the examples to the right show. 
the printout will also include information about three reliability indices that are used to help verify whether or not the test results are valid. Fixation errors give an indication of whether the patient looked away from the central dot. During testing, small targets are periodically placed in the expected physiological location of a blind spot, and they should not be seen when the proper fixation is maintained. If the patient records seeing this target, it is recorded as a fixation error, as this patient will have. A false positive error will occur when the patient presses the button when they did not have a stimulus presented to them. Blank targets with 0% contrast are periodically shown to check if the patient responds even if no stimulus is present. False negative errors are evaluated by presenting targets at 100% contrast where they had been seen at a less intense stimulus before. If they do not respond, it is counted as a false negative. I hope that this video helps you to set up the frequency doubling technology perimeter during our screenings. Thank you.